Today, the message is entitled, Get Moving. Get Moving. And we're going to pray and then get into this. Father, I want to thank you for what you're saying. I pray that you would speak through me and open up our ears to hear your voice. And I pray for those who are at home, those who are on Facebook, wherever they are, may they hear your word and may it transform their lives, our lives. Give me the grace to share what you want me to share and be glorified, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's put our hands on our hearts and pray this with me, with conviction. Dear Jesus, Jesus. speak to my heart heart. and change my life. life. Amen. 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 Good praying, everyone. And good prophesying. Thank you, Anne, for prophesying boldly to us. And Chris, praying boldly for us. Amen. It was good to hear. So the message this morning is entitled, Get Moving. God is moving, and we want to move with him. We do not want to be complacent, uh, being lazy, and just letting God move, and we're not moving with him. We want to move with him, and we don't want to move independently. We want to move with him. I read somewhere recently that somebody said during uh, during a storm, uh, the optimist will say, oh, I hope the winds die down. Uh, The pessimist will say, well, it's too stormy to sail. But the leader will say, I'm going to set the sails so that I can be moved by the wind. So... The wind is moving. We need to set our sails to move with God. Today, we'll continue our theme of how to share the good news. By gleaning from the woman at the well story in John 4, 1 through 42, we'll learn from the master himself, Jesus. So we're not going to read the whole entire story. We're going to break this up in probably a a few, uh, over a few weeks. But we're going to glean from the woman at the well and learn from the master himself, Jesus, how to share the good news, how to be the evangelist that he is. Some people will say, well, I'm not an evangelist. An evangelist means someone who shares the good news. Somebody say, I'm not an evangelist. Well, Jesus was an evangelist and we're called to be like him. So if he was evangelistic, God has called us to be evangelistic. Everything that he was, God wants to work in us. So let's look at John 4. We'll start in verse 1 and we'll start reading this. In John 4, 1. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Now we'll pause right there. 
there's more to the story, but I'd like to read the end so we see what happens at the end. We know that the woman will, in verse 25, the woman first started to say, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Well, then it goes on and we see that she is quite excited. Ver verse 28, then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Many, and then verse 39, many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. We see that the woman's words were important, but they were not the ultimate thing. The ultimate thing was the words coming from Jesus' own mouth. And that's what the woman did at the well. She introduced people to Jesus and they believe because of what he said and because of his words many more became believers and they said just like we read before we no longer believe just because of what you said now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world now principally we're going to focus on Jesus and what we can learn from Jesus about sharing the good news but right now I'd like to share a little illustration. See if I can turn this around here. Will this work? <laughs> Hopefully. And I like two volunteers. Um, Chris and Irene. Can I get Chris and Irene for this little illustration? Just, this is a little, little illustration. Uh, Chris, come forward because you are Jesus in the same right? <laughs> and Irene is going to be the one that I am trying to share Jesus uh, to. So you're not looking at, at Jesus now. But my, my goal in sharing the good news is I'm talking to I'm talking to Irene, I'm conversing with her. But the, the goal is that, not that I'm the center of attention. So I'm sharing the faith. I'm sharing the faith to Irene. My goal is not to be the center of attention. I want to, as soon as possible, to make the a transfer over. And my whole goal, here, come this way so everybody can see you. Turn, turn, this, turn this way. <laughs> All right. So my goal is here is I'm sharing with Irene, but I want to as soon as possible say to Irene, Irene, I want to introduce you to my friend Jesus, and I want you to say <laughs> Jesus. And then my goal is to kind of now now I want you to converse, make like you're conversing with your extras in a little And my. <laughs> <laughs> my goal is to get my goal is to start to withdraw now uh, during the process she may need to hear from me so she can learn more about Jesus but my goal is to get the attention off of myself and get it on to Jesus and to, to draw away thanks guys <laughs> and this is what the woman at the well does probably unconsciously she tells people about Jesus but then they go out to see Jesus himself and that is where the great power is 
the power is not as much, well, we have power in ourselves, but the power is not in getting everybody focused on ourselves, but to get them connected to Jesus. Do you see that? Do you see that? Good guys, or are we just saying yes, because I'm asking? <laughs> I hope we see it. So, I have three main points with regard to sharing the good news. And the first is, get moving. That's the title of the message. Get moving. Can I hear an amen? amen. Get moving. And get moving. You're on an adventure with God. Like I put you on an adventure with Jesus. And we see that this whole encounter with the woman at the well began with Jesus and his disciples moving from where they were to back to their home area, which was Galilee. So we read in the beginning here, we read before John 4.1. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. So he was moving. Now, he was moving in the sphere that God had called them to while he was on earth. He was not... Uh, entering outside of into different other nations though the Samaritan area was uh, Samaria was uh, crossing some boundaries there we'll talk about that in the future but he was moving all him and his disciples were moving and then it says he had to go through Samaria to get home so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus was tired. Now we'll get to that in, uh, in a few minutes, but we'll just stop at the part that he moved and he got to the well. And we need to see life as an adventure. When Jesus says, follow me, He's calling us to an adventure. And when we, I, I really saw this when I was reading the Song of Songs, that here the bride is going on an adventure with her bridegroom. And this is how we should view everyday life, is that it's an adventure, and we don't know what will happen or what will unfold. But the Father wants to set up these different encounters uh, with people, and our goal is to let people know about Jesus, to introduce people to Jesus. So here's an ac acronym or acrostic that I have for GET, because you're going to hear this word GET. Uh, I, I was uh, writing this in my journal. Valerie came to me in the uh, Pray For Me as, as she was going off to school on Monday. I believe it was, yeah, Monday. Pray For Me. And she immediately looked at my journal and read this out loud. Get, it stands for, at least in, in this message, you know. <laughs> Not in the actual official Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> Get. God empowers trust. God empowers trust. The G, the E, the T. God empowers trust. So trust gets us going. And when we trust God like Abraham trusted God, we get moving. And when we get moving, God empowers the moving. But if we just stay complacent, and sitting around doing nothing 
we can't expect God to move. He empowers trust. So we need to know what is he saying? What does he want? And we need to see every day as a, as a day that God wants to move through us in some way. Of course, there's going to be days where you're going to need to be stop and settle and rest, and we'll talk about that too. Here is where I'm from. It's a map of Long Island, New York, and it's not because Long Island is a big place. It's not. Uh, it's not all of Long Island. So, but I'll, I'll come over here and show you if you can see. This is the Manhattan area, that Central Park, that green. This is the Manhattan area where there's a lot of skyscrapers. And then at the top of Long Island, uh, the physical island, though they don't call Brooklyn Long Island, you have Brooklyn, then you have Queens, and then you have the Long Island area, and out here would be the Hamptons, you know, with all the white, um, and not white sand, but you know, like the, the white, design and you know, different white houses. And I grew up around this around this area here. It was a commute into the city and a lot of people who work in the city. And that's where my you know my house that I showed you before is from. I grew up around here. Now it was always as God as God saved me. It was always my vision to stay in, in Long Island and preach and plant a church there. And, and I, felt, I felt a heart for Long Island. But God had other plans. <laughs> God had other plans. He, he uh, got me moving in a way that I never expected to go. Uh, and during when I was on Long Island, I did uh, I did a lot of street evangelism too. I was out on the streets pretty much every Friday night, sharing with people about Jesus. One encounter was very interesting because a couple couple years before, I met this guy who was in my basement and brought a gun into into my house now if my dad knew this i just talked to my dad this week if he knew this as as a teenager he would have really he <laughs> i would have really got in trouble for this but i had all sorts come because in my basement i had a dj studio and he popped out the gun and he told me that i'm going to get ten thousand dollars for doing a hit on somebody so uh you know, I was a bit surprised, but I, I just want to, I, I want to share kind of what it was like, you know, where, what it was like where I came from, because people think, oh, you know, Glenn, you know, Mr. Holy, but <laughs> I was, I, I was, uh, uh, that's anything that good is, is because God did it. Well, anyway, here's this guy, I lost touch with him. I'm, I'm witnessing in a certain area at a train station in, in Long Island. And I meet the guy out there, you know, it's like 10 o'clock, maybe 11 o'clock at night, maybe close to midnight. It's late because we would go out late on Friday night. I meet the guy. And back when he showed me the gun, I wasn't saved. I didn't know Jesus. But then I shared my faith with this guy. And, of course, that took boldness. And he listened. Uh, but then I think he was a little bit, you know, nervous and then went on. But... Amazingly, uh, God had all these different encounters, and my best man at my wedding was Will. But before Will was saved, he came to my house with a group of guys from Babylon. Babylon's a town in in Long Island, and what happened was, is a, a young teenage girl and she looked at this place and she said this place is like Babylon in the Bible and so it, 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 the name st st uh, st <laughs> stuck the name stuck and it's still called Babylon but I had a group of these guys come from Babylon we were doing some DJing they were doing some rapping and lo and behold as they left I went to look for my wallet and I couldn't find my wallet while they were at my house they stole my wallet 
and I didn't know it was them, but I suspected it was them. About a year or two later, I see Will upstate New York, pretty far uh, from me. I see, I see Will, uh, he came over, he says, oh, you know, I know, I just received Jesus. I said, oh, wow. And we start talking, he says, I'm born again. I said, yeah, I, I received Jesus too. He said, oh, I gotta confess something to you. We stole your wallet. <laughs> and then Will became a, a, a great friend of mine and we ended up going to Pensacola together well I went to the revival and then he went to the revival in Pensacola and he still lives in the Florida area I don't think they ever returned the wallet though but <laughs> it was uh, amazing all these God encounters now, the first point is get moving. And what, I, what I'm trying to bring out here and illustrate is that when you get moving, God works with you. Now, I'm not saying you need to move to another country. And I'm not saying you need to move to another city. Uh, what I am saying is make sure you're moving with Jesus. I hear an amen here. Make sure you're moving with Jesus. I don't mean going from place to place, trying to find meaning and success, because a lot of people keep on moving from here to there. They're trying to find meaning, they're trying to find success, and they use the Bible as a kind of excuse for that. But there is a, a word of wisdom that Jesus gives when he sends out his disciples, and what he's telling them is, I don't want you to do needless moving. I want you to go out and preach the gospel, Go to the lost sheep of Israel, proclaim the message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is Matthew 10. And then in verse 9 it says, Do not take any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. No bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff for the worker is worth his keep. But then this is the part I want to bring out. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. So there was this wisdom that Jesus gave, stay at that house until you leave. Don't be going from house to house, or they said something, you're, offend, you're upset with them, and you go to another place. But stay, stay with them. Settle there. That's your base. And then you go out from, the, out from there, and you share the gospel with the people that are around there, but the importance of being settled is uh, critical in this moving with Jesus. And when I say get moving, I don't mean running from God's presence and purpose like Jonah. You know, Jonah was moving, but he was running from God's presence. He was running from God's purpose. I don't mean that. Instead, move with Jesus daily and look for opportunities to engage with people rather than live insularly. Or rather than live insular, uh, just protecting yourself and with your own kind. Look for opportunities to engage with people. Amen? So here's the actual, this is an actual sign. <laughs> this is an actual sign from Brooklyn when you're leaving Brooklyn. And that's where most of my family is from. Leaving Brooklyn says, can you read it? Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> I found that very funny. Um, that this was an official sign as you as you're leaving Brooklyn, forget about it. And then for those who are listening to this, it's spelled F-U-H-G-E-D-D-A-P-O-U-D-I-T, all one word, forget about it. But I can't, I, I, I don't, I always remember, you know, where I've, where I've come from, and what God did while I was in 
New York. Then there's something else that we learn, which almost seems contradictory, but it isn't. And that is get rest. <laughs> Say that with me. Get rest. And if you go to, we're using Jesus here as the example, John chapter 4 and verse 6. So Jesus had been traveling, I, I would figure anywhere from about four to six hours. They were walking and they finally reached this area. Samaria, Jacob's well was there and Jesus tired as he was from the journey. So this is an interesting insight into Jesus. Jesus was tired. He needed rest. This is how fully human he became, which we'll talk more about that at Bible school, the incarnation. But Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. And the Lord uses his tiredness. This is where he meets the woman that comes to the well. And he sits down right there. We don't know exactly if he knew what was going to happen. Some say, well, he had foreknowledge, but we don't know if he knew exactly what was going to happen, but he knew to rest. And he was tired and he didn't try to do more than he was able. He rested and the disciples needed to rest too. And they were out getting food. They were out in the town. They were trying to get food for lunch time. So get rest. So I say get moving, but also get rest. You'll get tired, but don't give up. You'll get tired if you're, if you're moving with God, if you're following Jesus like the disciples, moving with Him. You will get tired but don't give up and realize that even when we are stationary getting rest God can use that and we may not even be uh, realizing what's gonna happen or how it's gonna happen but here it is this great encounter that Jesus has with the woman and we read in verse 7 when a Samaritan woman came to draw water Jesus said to her will you give me a drink and so he enters into this conversation with her now like Jesus rest at the well a well is a source of fresh flowing water the origin of living water so the idea of living water in Scripture is, is fresh water, flowing water. And then it also has a higher meaning. This living water is God's Spirit and His Word. So a well is a source of fresh flowing water. And there's something very symbolic here. For Jesus, His Father was the well, His source of living water. And Jesus is our ultimate well and gives us his spirit and word as living water. So let's look at this in John 4.14. 4, well, starting in verse 13, Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Here Jesus is making himself known as the true, authentic well. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So what is he saying? This water, you drink this water and you become a spring. You become a well. And... The water is, is life-giving water. It's, when it's talking about eternal life, it's talking about the, the quality of water, that it's heavenly. But also, 
the quantity, it never stops. And it, it gives eternal life. That's what his God's Spirit's like, and that's what His Word is like. And so His Spirit is living water. His Word is living water. We'll read there in John 7, 37. So if we're going to rest, we want to rest at His well, drinking from His well, getting our renewal, our revival, our refreshment from His well. John 7, 37, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Notice that within. Rivers of living water will flow from within them. And how does it happen? Whoever trusts in me, believes is trust. God empowers trust. Whoever trusts in me, that's how I'd like to communicate it. Whoever trusts in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And there's more that we can read about in Revelation 7:17, 7, Revelation 21:6. I'd like to look at Revelation 21:6. Quickly, He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. The idea in Scripture, spring and well, is pretty much the same thing. I will give water without cost from the spring of life. The water of life. And then it goes on to say, those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Now this is how we are victorious. We're victorious by constantly drinking from the well. And just like we need water, God has designed our bodies to need water continually. We need to be drinking. We need to be hydrated. There is a greater drinking that we need to do, and that is constantly drinking from that living water constantly drinking from that well this gives us life and so we need to come to Jesus and drink from him and as we do it the, 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 the reservoir the reservoir within us starts to build up so that it can flow through us like rivers of water out into the world evangelism always kind of gets off track if we're not resting at the well if we're not drinking from the well who is Jesus when we start to get all about doing stuff but not resting in him so that the resting and the moving go together we we move we rest we move we rest and that constant cycle in our life and when we rest it's all for the purpose of and with the heart of I've got to move with God. I uh, need to be refreshed and renewed so that I can move with Him and be the fisher of people that He has called me to be, to walk with Him and be on this adventure. And, oh, I have to get into this, huh? Uh, Jer Jeremiah 2.13. <laughs> Jeremiah 2.13 is we have a tendency to look to false wells Wells that do not give living water. Or to look for something else to refresh us rather than the Lord himself. And, and then God has a controversy with Israel about this in Jeremiah 2.13. I was going to skip this, but no, I can't skip this. <laughs> My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. So we tend to make our own cisterns of things that will refresh us rather than actually going to the source. And the source is? It's Jesus. And I went, well, I went to Jesus yesterday. I went to church. Well, that's a, good, that's a good beginning. But yesterday's drinking will not sustain you today. That's 
You need to be constantly drinking the living waters and all throughout the day. And Allie, Allie, do you have your thing with you? Your big tumbler thing? Do you have it? She, this is Allie. She's got this tumbler. I, have you ever seen them? They're starting to come out. It's about this big. Right? I'm trying to show. Wait, wait. <laughs> it's, it's big. It's about this big. This thing you has a huge handle, and that's what you need to be. And she's carrying around this water so that she can stay hydrated. This is what you need to do with Jesus. Have this big tumbler and just keep on drinking him in. And that's what the scripture is like. It's like a big tumbler. And the. The life comes out of when we're trusting that, hey, this is a reservoir of water. This is a spring and I'm drinking the spring in. So you never want, I, Anna did a great job teaching on Monday. And one of the big things she was bringing out is the importance of both the word and the spirit, the word and the spirit. You can't divorce the two, though people try to divorce the two. With the Word always comes the Spirit, and with the Spirit always comes the Word, if it's the Holy Spirit. So, but we keep those two together. When Jesus saves you, He begins a well within you. So there's both a well within and a well outside of you. And both are working together. This well within... This well within you is critical because it's the source of Jesus' life. His word, his spirit within you. Live from this well. This well that's within you. And continue to fill up this well with his word and spirit. But live from this life that God has put inside of you. And when you're reading the word, it's like you're replenishing the well. When you are drinking in the Spirit, you're replenishing the well. And then you're living from this well of living water that's in you. But how you reach out to people, how you share the gospel is you let this well of living water flow out of you through your words and through your actions. And this is the vision of our church. Our church's vision is to be a well where people can gather for God's living water. We, we want to be a place where you can come and are revived. And then you become a living well for others to encounter Jesus in His Spirit. So that's the vision. Can I read that again? You all with me? So our church's vision is to be a well where people can gather for God's living water. We want to be a place where you can come and are revived and then you become a living well for others to encounter Jesus and His Spirit. That you receive and you become that, that well. This is my last major point. Get talking. Get talking. So we're going to go back to John 4. We're learning from the Master here how to share the faith. And John 4, 7 through 10. We read it before. We'll read it again. When the when, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God. Now he was the gift of God. And he's, Jesus is often talking in humble terms when he's speaking in the third person. But he says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. 
And the gift of God can also be interpreted as the Holy Spirit as well. But as we know, the Son and the Spirit are one. So if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked Him and He would have given you living water. Now this is very similar to the conversation that goes on in the chapter before. Jesus says you must be born again to Nicodemus, but Nicodemus says, how can someone be born again? I can't go back into my mother's womb. And she's also thinking in the natural realm too because she responds in verse 11, Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Now, what is happening here is they're engaging in a conversation. And to share a faith, we need to get talking. We need to open up our mouth. That's how you make friends. You start talking. That's how you make friends. And there's an interesting way in which Jesus goes about this. What does he do? What is his first words to her? What kind of speech is it? Well, it's a question. Will you give me a drink? And questions are very effective to uh, engage with people. He begins with the question. And here I'd like to say, don't sell the gospel. You want to switch from salesperson mode to winning a friend. And you win a friend by asking questions, engaging in a conversation. And notice here that he is talking to somebody that it wasn't acceptable to talk to a Samaritan. Jews talking to a Samaritan or a male just to engage in any conversation with a female. So he's crossing boundaries. I'll talk about that more, God willing, in the future. But he, his goal is to, to win a friend. And I want you to see Luke, Luke 16, 9. Luke 16, 9. So I had I made I was out on the streets pretty much every every week for many years and that's how the ministry started here on the Queen Street Mall we were out on the streets and I made so many mistakes but you you've got to make some mistakes to learn and of course one of the mistakes that I used to make is the hard sell and it's not about the hard sell it's about getting to know someone talking with them conversing with them and it just be, being kind is so powerful here in Luke 16 9 I tell you this is Jesus speaking I tell you use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings in other words they'll be you'll gain friends and they will be on the other side and they'll welcome you into eternal dwellings and say, hey, come, you know, you helped us out. Uh, you led us to Jesus. But notice how he says how we should use our worldly wealth. And how can that, what can that look like in a daily thing? It could look uh, like buying someone a cup of coffee and say, no, no, it's on me. Or getting somebody a meal and say, no, no, it's on me. It's also when you're sowing and tithes and offerings. Everything is, is used to get the gospel out. And there's uh, somebody may be expecting to pay for something and you are generous toward them or you give a gift to them or you bake something for them. You're using the worldly wealth to gain friends, uh, but not in a trickery way. You're just showing the kindness of Jesus. We're not trying to trick someone. We're trying to, we want to represent Jesus. Treat other, per, treat other people, or, or treat the other person. Well, let me read it as I wrote it. Treat the other person with dignity and honor like Jesus. This is what Jesus did to the Samaritan wo woman. Now she was known, uh, she was known as not the best of character. Uh, she had all these men and all these divorces. And even the man she was with, she wasn't married with, married to him. Uh, and yet, and she was a Samaritan. And yet, Jesus treated her with dignity and honor, and engaged in conversation with her. 
This is what struck the Samaritan woman. It struck her that that you, you're quite different. And so what we say, what we sh do should strike people and should be Christ-like. How can you ask me for a drink? You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. And like Jesus, ask questions. It was a question from Jesus that got the whole conversation started. So I don't know where to begin. Ask people questions. It could be simple questions. Ask the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> Holy Spirit, what do you want me to ask? It could begin with, how's your day going? Um, what about the weather? <laughs> A lot of people talk about that. <laughs> then you start to be like Chris. You know, there's storms, and uh, the storm will pass, though. <laughs> but... Get the conversation started. It's, it, get it get it going and, and started. And this is how you engage with people. Daniel Heng is very good at this. Diane makes gifts to give out. Anna is very good at this. She'll come home and say, Oh, I prayed with this person and talked with this person. And We're close to the end here. Defend the Bible, Charles Spurgeon said. Defend the Bible, I'd sooner defend the lion. You don't defend the Bible, you open its cage and let it roar. So the word of God is like a lion. I'll read that again, Charles Spurgeon. Defend the Bible, I'd sooner defend the lion. You don't defend the Bible, you open its cage and let it roar. The, the responsibility is not to try to prove everything. It's to, to share it. And you share it and let God do the work through the word. There may be some you know, apologetics that you can get involved in, and that could be good. But the real, the real salvation is going to come to people as they encounter Jesus, not your logic. Here's another thing that Spurgeon said. Oh, and the rain is about to come. Let the pure gospel go forth in all its lion-like majesty, and it will soon clear its own way and ease itself of its adversaries. Let the pure gospel go forth in all its lion-like majesty, and it will soon clear its own way and ease itself of its adversaries. Amen? And so last week I shared with you this. If I have a couple of copies if you want it. This is one of the tools you can use. I'm not going to go through all this because I went through it last week, but you can get the message from last week. It's called Revisiting the Romans Road, and you can download it at the Inspiration Fire online store, brisbanefire.com. I'll also include it in the bundle for this message, the teaching bundle for this message. And it goes through Romans 3.23, Romans 5.8, Romans 6.23, and Romans... 10.9, it's a simplified Romans road so that you could have these verses to use when the time is right or you can walk somebody through it when they're like really hungry. And that's the thing is you got to wait till somebody's hungry. Uh, and they're saying, well, how do I get saved? Oh, okay, let's pull out the Romans road or let's read John chapter 3. Or let's see what happened in the book of Acts when they said, what must they do to be saved? Some, something like that. And also, uh, lastly, before we pray, I want to let you know that Colossians, the mystery is out. You can also download this at the Inspiration Fire online store. And the good thing is a P it's a PDF. Uh, there's a digital one and the print one. The print one is still going to come out. But the digital one is um, good because every time it's uh, upgraded or every time it's uh, edited, you'll be able to download the latest, uh, well, you'll be able to download for free the latest version. It'll tell you, oh, there's a new download ready for you and you can download the latest version for free. And there is a new version coming out. So please, if I could get you to pray for this project, it's something that's important. Uh, to me and on my heart and I believe important for the church um, and if you can join me in prayer for that that would be wonderful well amen yeah
Ah, yes, yes. So this is what we'll do. I'll pray. I'll pass it to Christine, Christine to share prophecy, and then we'll hear from Daniel. Is that that good? Yeah. That sounds good. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word of life. Your words are like living water, and we want to drink them in. And we want to drink in your spirit and be filled. Move, Lord, through us that we can lead people to Jesus this week. And every day we're looking for opportunities to share, to engage with people. Not to kick the door down, but to discern where there is an open door. I'm asking for great grace on our congregation to share the faith and then come together and testify about, hey, I, this happened and this happened. And look what the Lord is doing. And I'm asking for a great boldness that each one could speak the word of God with uh, authority, with power. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to put the, I'm going to give the mic. Excuse me, guys. Move it here, give the mic to Christine first, and then then over to Daniel. And thank you, Christine, for stepping out in faith and sharing. God is amazing, isn't he? Um, he gave me this prophecy to bring today, and I was just waiting for the right time. I knew it really wasn't the right time, so I had no idea what you were speaking you didn't, I had no idea. So, <laughs> So this is a word that the Lord gave me on the 12th of October, but it's been on, I think I posted it on Facebook a couple of days ago, but I knew I had to share it today. It is called, um, The Pioneering Adventures That You So Love Are Waiting For Your Footprint. I heard the Lord say, for those who had almost given up waiting for the new thing to emerge, come as you are, come empty with nothing to give, and I will pour into you all that you need. Come thirsty, come hungry, and watch how I open up rivers for you. I have not left you in a desert without providing the way out. Your miracle begins where you are. Dig a well right where you are. Don't look for something else. The water of my spirit will transform those around you. You have something precious that your community and the world needs. You have done it before. Now it is time to redig those old worlds and do it again. What you pioneered in the past is not finished. Circumstances came to put a cap on the world, but I saw, I see how you stepped out for me. Some of your past seasons you thought were finished and long gone, but I saw the prayer, whoa, that accompanied your endeavours. I saw... I saw how you wept over this new adventure you were so passionate about. You now feel that the passion is gone, but I say to you, I am with you to open up some of those old wells. You laid the foundations and now I will anoint you to pick it up and run with it again. I will set you up and draw the people. That thing you planted in the community was not just a good idea, it was my idea. Watch as I cause the new to rise up out of the old. Step out, and as you do, many doors will open for you. Everything you birthed in the spirit is waiting for you to bring life to once again. Watch for the people I bring into your lives to help you. You have been given territory. It is yours and cannot be taken away unless you give it away. Fresh vision will be given as you take the first step. The pioneering adventures you so love are waiting for your footprint. Let your dreams come alive again, says the Lord. Every place where the sole of your foot shall tread, I have given unto you. And that verse is from Joshua 1.3. I just want to um, just Amen. add a couple of things Amen. to the end of this word, if that's okay. That 
I believe that word is for somebody or some people here, particularly people that have in the past dug a well for the Lord and seen fruit, but circumstances came and it was kind of seemed like it was aborted. The Lord's saying, pick it up and do it again. Now I'm aware there's, there's a lot of people here that are much younger. Maybe they've not started anything. This word that you heard today from Glenn and what the Lord is saying is you've got to get out. You've got to take that first step. You've got to be a pioneer. And Australians are known as being a pioneering people. We're a pioneering nation. So people, some people will say, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You just take the first step. A pioneer is a pace setter, a way maker, a ground breaker. They open up, they go before, and we can all do that. Every person can do that. So it may not be that you're going to plant um, a church, but it's, a, it's your ministry. You are, you are drawing from the well that's within you, in your community, and you are reaching out. You are going with the Lord, as we've heard, and to, um, to just look, to just bring your gift and let your gift come out and the Lord will draw the people to you. And it was very interesting in that story. In the word here, the Lord says, um, the new is going to come out of the old. Mm. And in that story, that was an ancient well. That was an old yeah. well. Yeah. And it was at the old well that God was going to do something new. So people are waiting now for some brand new thing. Just look at what you've done before. Look at your gifts and start using them. Those are going to be the things that open up your well and as you move forward and pioneer and do new adventures for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I've got Daniel. Thank Daniel. Thank you for hanging on. Um, now, just make sure the volume's up. So I. That's okay. Yeah, we can. We can hear you pretty good. That's great. First of all, I wanted to say um, from both Diane and I, Christine, that was a really good word. That was a fa fabulous word. It's a word in God from God, um, and uh, we just want to affirm you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, that reminded me to I, I love that you talked about the well and Glenn talked about the well because um, when this has been a pretty hard year for, for me personally because of what's happened in my own life and with Diane's life and when I hit rock bottom I said to the Lord Lord I hit rock bottom and he said well you need to get to the bottom in order to dig the well deeper so <laughs> that's what happened and so I just want to give this um, Commend, commend you for what your word is, but also to encourage everybody. Don't give too much faith to the devil, okay? That they have your bad circumstances in your life. Don't don't praise him for it. Um, look to the Father to see what God can do with those circumstances. And and turn it around to so let God work in it. Because he's, he's have more faith in the Lord than in what the devil can do Amen. and circumstances can do. Anyway, we just wanted to uh, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Glenn, for the time that you've given just very shortly to, to just thank everybody for praying for us. Uh, we just want to thank you for partnering with us because without you, we can't go. And we're part of, um, we might be the point in the spear, but you're all part of that spear that goes out into the darkness. And uh, we want to thank you for your prayers, for those who did pray for us. We really, really needed your prayers. For those who supported us and loved us, we really needed that. Because grace, we needed the grace of God. Because someone once said the grace of God is, is the spirit of God being poured into a person to strengthen them for his purposes. And that's exactly what it is. It's exactly what we needed. We were away for 16, 16 days. And, um, and we were constantly harassed physically by by lots of things. One day we even had an exploding toilet, would you believe? <laughs> but um, we just want to give you some, uh, some, give God glory for everything he's done because it is not about how quali qualified you are. It is about how available you are, that God will use you. 
and that you need to say yes. My wife is, I have the greatest admiration for her. There is no no in her spirit. There is only yes. When we were praying about the trip after she broke her arm, she said to me, the one question, did God say stop? And I couldn't, I couldn't honestly say that God did say stop. So despite circumstances, we need to say yes, Jesus, and keep going. Um, in a, we went away for 16 days. Thank you for praying towards the snowy mountains. We traveled for about 3,300 kilometers. And in that 16 days, we gave away over 500 things, including 360 Bibles. We, um, we saw such hunger. We saw the Spirit of God, as Christine was saying. We saw the Spirit of God move in new ways like we've never seen before. We saw the Father touch human beings who do not have any handle on God at all, um, who do not know God personally at all. We saw him move in such personal ways towards them. We saw such hunger towards the things of God from people who don't know him at all. Why? Because you, when you live in a state of starvation, you don't sometimes know you're hungry until somebody you know, brings in, you walk past a bakery and all of a sudden you go, oh, I'm hungry. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and God's that bread. God's that hunger. God's 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 the one that brings that that fragrance to those who are being saved. And we want to thank you for, for all your prayers for that. I uh, just want to commend Glenn for your message today. Every point that you made, all three points, was exactly uh, tailor made for what we we do. Uh, we got moving, um, and if we can get moving, you guys can all get moving too. Amen. And we um we, we learn to soak in God because we know that without God we are done. We're nothing. Okay. So we 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 lie we 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 have a saying that we 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 lie down in God's green pastures and we soak. And now we learn to run lying down. So that's how you get rest. And um and um and yeah, you 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 you've got to, you've got to talk. You've got to be friendly. You know, it's not about selling a doctrine. It's about introducing the person to the presence of God. And the, and you all have that. You all have that. I know you all have that because you're all saved. You've all given your hearts to Jesus. And he's poured everything that he won at the cross into you. You just don't know it yet. You just haven't lived it yet. You just haven't, you haven't, you've got untapped resources of the wonderful gifts of heaven inside all of you. And we just want to commend you and thank you for your prayers. Um, so, you know, we had a person, uh, I'll give you one testimony, but uh, one other person said, uh, when, when we gave um, gifts, when we gave, uh, Diane had a word for this person, and she looked at me, she had no, she a, a per, total atheist. She said, you guys must be mind readers. <laughs> and, and she said, how did you know that about my life? That reminded me, you know, of what Glenn was saying about the woman at the well. Come meet the man who knows everything about me. She said, you guys must be mind readers. And then oh, as, as clearly as I heard the spirit of God say within me, you can't, you won't get an opening bigger than that. <laughs> no, we're not mind readers. We just know a person called Jesus and he's alive and he speaks to us. And, and so on goes the conversation of sharing the good news. But um, I want to share uh, one testimony with you guys. I mean, there's plenty of testimonies. And, and I'm in the process of trying to write uh, a, a, a newsletter, email, and hopefully Anna will be able to put it on uh, Facebook or something so you can all have access to it. And it, we're going to try to share as many testimonies as we can. Diane purposely didn't share any of the testimonies from in a blog so that we could put it as fresh bread to, to encourage all of you in the newsletter. So... Pray for me as I write this, it'll, it'll make sense. Anyway, we want to share one testimony. The night before, God often speaks to me the night before about the next day. And I'll say, Lord, what do you want? And he'll say, pull out, because, you know, we've got this wealth within us. He said, pull out that painting, pull out that painting. Because you're going to meet somebody the next day that I want to give you, I want you to give it to. Or, or, Diane, or God will say the same to Diane about um, other things. And, um, uh, uh, yeah. Before I give the testimony, I just want to show you, share with you that um, 
that we um, uh, we gave away f- over 360 Bibles and we also gave away um, about 35 bookmarks, um, about 19 paintings. We had 19 prophetic words in 16 days. And we met, we had about 51 significant encounters with people who were absolutely touched and moved by God um, during that time. And um, we also gave away a whole lot of other things like um, shopping vouchers, blankets, because it was one degree. When we arrived in Kuma, it was snowing. Can you believe it? At three, at, at midday, driving into Kuma, it was three degrees. And I'm like, we're from Queensland. Queensland's 33 degrees today. But on a road here, we're not used to this. It's three degrees. I'm freezing. And um, they had snow there. Um, anyway, let's get back away from that. Um, back to the testimony. Uh, one testimony was that um, the Lord spoke to me about getting this painting out. And I'll show you this painting. And it's titled, anyway, I'll tell you about the title. It's written on the bottom of the painting. And it, um, I, I go to see that the Lord, the Lord uh, imprinted my heart to go to this dress shop, um, a dress shop. And she said, he said, uh, I want you to speak to the person who runs the shop. Um, so I go into the shop. The first two days, the shop was shut. So I thought, okay, Lord, I'll have to leave this with you. If you want me to go in, then you're going to have to open the shop. Uh, so the day, the afternoon before we left, the shop was open. I walked in and I met Joanne, beautiful lady, but she was a psychic lady. And, and I said, Lord, how do you want me to introduce this? Because you got to, you got to talk. Okay. And, um, and, um, I said to her, Joanne, nice to meet you. Um, I've got a gift from you for you. And she looked at me and she said, um, right now there's so much happening in my life. She said, um, what I need is peace. Can you give me peace? <laughs> and I said, funny you should say that. Here's something prepared for you earlier. Um, God spoke to me and to give you this as a gift. It is entitled Peace. <laughs> and uh, um, and, and she was blown away because, um, and I said, um, you know, we think peace comes in the absence of conflict, but true peace comes in the middle of chaos. And that was the word. Sometimes when you step out in obedience, you have nothing except just your obedient heart. And then God puts words in your mouth. And then as you speak, it's like pulling on the string and more comes out. Those who walk in pro- the prophetic will understand this. Um, and we can all, all walk that. And and as I as I was saying, that, that um, true peace comes in the middle of chaos. She looked down and she looked at me and she said, my life is surrounded by chaos. Wow. And it was just a perfect opportunity to be able to share that, that Jesus um, wants to step into her boat and Jesus wants to calm the waves and bring peace into her life and actually bring the good news. So um, it was a way we, well, I was I was able to share what God wanted for her life. Um, story. But um, there's plenty more and I'm not going to go on about it because um, it's just taking too much time. You can always share more. You can always have some more time, you know, in the weeks to come when you feel up for it, uh, Daniel. So. No worries. You just have to ask and I'll be there. But that's cool. That's that's not an invitation. Not, it's not a hint. That's fine. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you, Glenn. Uh, I just we just wanted to thank you for your um, just your, your your time and also for your your prayers over the last few weeks because we've really, really needed it. We've had uh, we lost things. We were the beds we slept on were like sleeping on concrete. Um, um, we, we had pain every day. We we had an exploding toilet. That was a story in itself. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, but you know, through it all, Jesus was just gloriously wonderful. It's not a story about us. It's a story about him and going on, on adventures with him. So thank you so much. Bless you guys. Oh, bless you. Daniel, do you mind praying like a final blessing over us? Uh, because... I've got a scripture I want to read to you, you guys. It's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 16. And this is in the Passion Translation. And I want to, as I'm praying, as we're praying, uh, I want to make this verse of scripture part of that prayer. So it says here, Paul is saying, and I'm praying it to all of you here, all of you. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth. 
And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Do it, Father God. We pray that right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that uh, you would unveil within each person listening the unlimited riches of your glory. And not just your glory, but your favor. Favor is not for nothing. It's for your purposes. Until supernatural strength floods all of them, the innermost being, with your divine might and explosive power. Father God, so that um, each of them, as they walk in obedience to you, that they will not just say they're intimate with you, but they will actually walk in the paths of Jesus. And they will be truly what we are meant to be, followers. Followers follow someone, and we follow you, Jesus. And Lord, I pray right now that they will have even more faith in you than in the circumstances of their lives, individual lives, Lord. That they will they will come to have an unfolding within them, uh, the riches of the kingdom of God within each of them, that the seed that you've planted in all of them would start to bear great fruit. Oh, Lord, and I pray that you would encourage them, that you would awaken their spirits, Lord, that, they, that, that the faith towards you and the love for you would be far greater than the things that would stop them from moving and taking that one step forward, Lord, and standing. So we just pray for each of them now, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would just bring a revol revolution into their spirit. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, let's go forth and uh, Amen. Have, have some uh, fellowship and put in practice. Let's not forget the word. Yeah. Uh, put it into practice. Amen. And a big thanks to Daniel and Diane. We love you. We're proud of you. Thank you for your encouraging words.